everyone. Here with John Libman. John, thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me. And it was a little over a month ago. We sat down and we said, looks like by the end of the year. Threes. Yep. And they're saying by the second quarter of this year, they're probably going to be in the low, in the mid threes. Towards the end of this year will be fours. Right. right. Rates are going <laughs> to yeah. go up to about 4%, which is why we start with a disclaimer. We don't have a crystal ball. Yes. Um, so that we can't be like, wow, they were wrong, right? Yeah, exactly. I think it was like January range. Yeah. We sat down and I literally had the printouts from Mortgage Bankers Association talking about what are the projections actually all the way out to 2023. Right. And um, couldn't have been more off, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Right? yeah. It, couldn't right. have been more off, right? But the relativity yeah. of it, right? Everybody yeah. looks at rates have, are up. Yep. They are up. They're still phenomenal. Exactly. I mean, these are the same rates that we saw in 2018. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, this is, these are the rates. You know, the difference is obviously a 17 to 20% bump on sales prices. Right. 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 But also, there's an increase in a lot of income. A lot of people have saved for larger down payments. That's who's winning these offers. You know, and, um, but rates are up is nothing to panic about, right? Sure. Look at those people that bought in 2018. There was no pandemic at that point, right? Right. So then all of a sudden there was an opportunity for them to refinance. So just because I buy a property today does not mean a lot of people actually sit and they'll calculate what their payment is over 30 years, but realistically, it's not very common to pay it 360 times. Yeah. You know? And then no so, one wants to look at those numbers it, it, anyway. Exactly. But. Right. And so most people, there's going to be another wave and potentially it's three, five years down the road, you know, who knows what that's going right. to come up and there'll be that opportunity to refinance at that point. You know, life happens, right? You get into a home, you know? Well, even with that, we don't have a crystal ball for what will happen to them, but what about today, right? What should borrowers be looking at? Because the, the media we know has a tendency to bring on yeah. the negativity, the fear, the panic. Yep. Um, with that, I mean, I always say, regardless of what your mortgage rental, excuse me, your mortgage rate is, renting is 100% interest, right? So 100%. Yep. the relativity to where we were not too long ago, they are higher, but there is still a really good time and way to invest your money. So what's your advice for borrowers who may be infiltrated with this panic from the media at this point? I mean, one of the things that qualified borrowers, this could lessen the buyers out there, mm -hmm. right? So where everyone's been panicking about, I'm walking in, there's 50 people at this open house, maybe that's gonna limit these qualified borrowers. Yeah. That is one piece of the puzzle that it can do. Okay. It hasn't necessarily slowed anybody down yet, but that could happen. What I'm seeing now, and it's been a lot of talk at Fairway, is that we're trying to think about, we're almost bringing ourselves back to 10 or 15 years ago in a lot of the programs. So a lot of your seasoned agents, a lot of seasoned mortgage people are gonna remember certain programs that were out at that yeah. time. Right, uh, one that we're doing all the training again this week is um, you used to do these buy down programs, right? Yep. So three, two, one buy downs was an ex what it was is you would build in a seller credit that you would have almost a discounted rate for a year, then the second year, and then the third year would go back to really where the current rate is. So for example, if say the rate, these aren't real rates, so I can't disclose that, right? So, yeah. so say a rate really today in the market, say a 5% rate. Right. Well, the difference between a 4% rate and a 5% rate is $200 a month. Right. So what they're doing is you can, which is $2,400 in a year. Right. So they would say, okay, I'm going to give a seller credit for $2,400. And then buy you'd have, down. buy it down for yeah. one year, and it would go to the 5% rate the next year. Okay. Right. This was, and we used to do them where that would happen, go up a half percent the second year, and then go up another half percent. And it would almost like trickle these borrowers into that new payment if they were concerned about the monthly payment. Right, that was one thing that was coming out, okay. you know? Um, what about, I'm sorry, go Yeah, ahead. I was gonna say, well, if it was on that, we'll stick on it, but I was gonna say single premium is another one for mortgage insurance, right? So this is another way to get your payment lower. But you can one actually- One-time payment? One-time pay payment at closing, you can pay your mortgage insurance up, so you don't okay. have it on a monthly basis, so then your overall monthly payment's lower. Because people are focused on rates because it affects your payment, sure. right? And some people have the sticker shock of it, but well, it's really about monthly say, payment. Of course people care about their purchase price, right? But we tend to find people are more focused on the down payment and the monthly payment yes. than the act, right? Because in living on a monthly budget. Yep. Do you think we're going to start to see more 80-10 mortgages, 80-20 mortgages, you know, secondary mortgage market? Is that coming back? Is, is starting to talk about that reacting too quickly too? Should we just, you know, Let's yeah, see so I think out. there's definitely advantages to doing those. Um, I would say the most common time we were doing those in the last two years wasn't because you could you needed the down payment, right? Because you can go up to those values on one loan, right? Right. The advantage of doing an eighty ten, which was an eighty percent first loan, a ten percent second, and then you would put down your ten percent, is right. you're avoiding monthly mortgage insurance, right? right. right? Or PMI, or any private mortgage insurance, right? And uh, we used it the most was when the county limits were low. 
Right. Right. All the county limits have really jumped up. So then you didn't you avoided jumbo pricing or right. jumbo or jumbo right. rates in the market, um, which strangely is actually the jumbo rate market is slightly lower than the conventional loans today. Wow. You know, okay. which is which is kind of holding tight. But all the loan limits really this year all jumped. You know, because the markets have increased seventeen to twenty percent, sure. right? So, which sure. is great because they've accounted for that. Yeah. So you can still put down a low down payment and still be in the market. Right. Um, there's definitely tons of options here. Yeah. You know, for well, and people. I think too, it comes down to what we always say: don't just take what you see on the media. Talk to a professional, right? This may mean uh, diversifying how you approach the property. It may mean that you change what your uh, comfortable price is a little bit. But there's no sentiment that we're seeing that says you should panic and you know, avoid, you know, abort, yeah. abort mission. I mean, the other thing is we're going to start talking about adjustable rate mortgages again, right? That hasn't been talked about in years because rates were so low. Yeah. Right. So you're going to start to see a lot of that come out again, right? So adjustable rate mortgages, you're going to see the play on the mortgage insurance. You're going to see these buy down options. These are all the things that the seasoned mortgage people are going to start to come out with again, because that's what we did when the rates were higher. Yeah. It's going through that whole process. And you mentioned that it's all about monthly payment, right? We're not focusing on rate. Well, maybe if I put 5% down, not 10% down, but I take that 5% and I pay some other debts off, right? My overall household monthly yeah, payments your go down. And there's different ways to yeah. kind of play with that. So we're not financial advisors, but we can help guide that. Or sometimes we're working with along with your financial advisor, which is a great person to connect with too, yeah. right? And try to figure out what that monthly household income is and what it can support on a monthly basis. Yeah, and I think the take home too is just understand, I always say to people, mortgages are like cars. There's different bells and whistles and you want to spreadsheet it, right? Yep. You want to excel it out to see it's not just a mortgage, here's your purchase price. What is? What are your options? And that is certainly going to be different borrower to borrower, and it may be different property to property with the same borrower. Yep. Um, I think the take home today is don't panic, understand what your options are, and don't just you know be subjected to what the media is trying to tell you with that fear. Understand those numbers and see uh, you know how opportunistic it can still be. I agree, 100%. Anything else we haven't talked about that you think in the current climate and, and data that's coming out that we should address at this time? We're just talking again in a month and yeah, see I'm where we're at. Pause. Yeah, I'm pausing so now because I'm trying part. to think. Yeah, yeah. I figured that. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we could talk about um, really the creativeness again of stuff. We didn't talk about assumable stuff, but we were talking about that a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, just trying to think of other things, but we just got to get creative with things, right? I think we're and trying to get fucking creative on creating inventory. Yeah, that's... And another agent just called me. She's like, what do you have coming on? Like, blah, blah, blah. She's like, you always have this. I was like, hmm, it's, I don't. There's there's just, there's nothing there. Yeah. You know, so when I talk to people, they're like, well, in the past, there was a scenario when you know, all of a sudden, you know, back in the day, we're calling, right? When we all first got in, right? You're talking about 2005, 2006, yeah. all this scenario unfolded. You know, well, all these properties hit the market. Well, there was a reason all those properties yeah. hit the market. Yeah, yeah. Go watch The Big Short, you know? Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, great movie, by the way, right? So go watch The Big Short. It blatantly explains from 2005, 2007, people will have these two-year adjustable mortgages that they really didn't qualify to buy these homes. Right. They also didn't have any down payments down, right? All these buyers have large down payments today, right? So then all of a sudden, those adjustables happened in 07, right? No one could afford them. There's a house. reason that all those properties hit the market at one time. Yeah. Unless these baby boomers sell their house, we got nothing. Yeah, well, and I think right? that's like, the thing. People right? are like, Unless oh, that it's a bubble too. It's not a bubble. That last crash, that yep. market was built on sand. This isn't. Oh, that yeah. People, you know, they have the income. They have the solid Tons approval, of equity in their and homes. And they're still fixed incomes. And equity. Yep. Right? Yep. Exactly. Yeah, because if there's not going to see, you know, unless, if you dropped 200 homes and rent them tomorrow, yes, that could affect the buying power. But if you spread out 200 homes throughout Massachusetts, it wouldn't even blip the radar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They would just be gone in a weekend. Yeah. And we'd, we'd be back to normal, right? right? And then we'd be back to, we don't have any properties. Right. right? right. So that's kind of, that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Take home as always, consult a professional. We would be happy to give you an overview of what your circumstance looks like, what those numbers look like, and how you can take uh, the best opportunities in this market for yourself. Thanks, John. As Thank always, you. have Thank a great you. day, everybody. All right. Have a good one.